Obviously, I know of your existence because at Cincinnati, yeah. you were a thorn to our West Virginia team. Listen, we were so happy to get out of there alive after the bottles were thrown at us. Okay. And no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. no, it's a real deal, though. West Virginia. It, it was it was amazing, just the atmosphere going in and playing in Morgantown. I mean, you get a real football environment when you go in there. It was the Big East back then, as you remember. Yep. Um, but going into that stadium, that was, you know, for us at Cincinnati, that was an incredible atmosphere. So let's talk about that. You have a lot of success at Cincinnati. Yeah. Obviously, you go to Notre Dame, have a lot yeah. of success there. Then you find yourself down here. Yeah. At LSU, and we all saw it, didn't we? The family first. Ooh, night. Oh yeah. How do you not? I yeah. already started dropping into a Southern accent when I was here, anyways. With you do. Talk. It's it's it's. I, I don't know how it happens. It's like my Boston accent. I lost that, and I got a Southern accent. There you go. Yeah, but yeah. we just want to let you know. Whenever that whole thing happened, and a lot of people were killing you, we are very much in understanding because I am a chameleon as well. Went to Ireland. Went to Ireland. Started. Say, <laughs> just started talking like an Irish fella, so that's going to happen. The recruiting, obviously the dancing you're doing down there. Yeah. Everybody's wondering, how will Brian Kelly work at LSU in the SEC? How has it been? And what are your thoughts on now coaching an SEC team, especially an LSU team that has high expectations literally every single game? Yeah. Well, first of all, you know, coming down to the South, uh, for me, it was a step outside my comfort zone. I mean, I think you want to challenge yourself in everything that you do. I mean, in the show and in, in the businesses you're in, you're challenging yourself in everything that you do. Thank so you. for me, it was that step outside a comfort zone for me. I'd never been down here. I've never been in the SEC, and I wanted that one more step. And, and since I've been here, you know, coaching is such a across the board, the same thing at every stop. Guys that want to be great, um, they they want the same thing, uh, and developing players, um, putting programs together across the board. Everybody wants the same thing. So whether you're in the South or you're in the Midwest or you're on the West Coast, it all becomes the same. Now, the weather's a little different. The Hot. food's a How little bit different. I, I, My we... first couple of years, the the acclimatization to it. I mean, it was. I'm I'm an Irish Catholic from Boston, so yeah. I mean I get a little red. I do as I well. Mean, yes. It, it 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 was, but after a couple of years, you get used to it, and I would much rather have this than shoveling snow. Okay, well, uh, very Definitely. valid. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. A very. I mean, right now I'm thinking about the drenched pants I'm wearing just from <laughs> as soon as I it's, land. I, I can see you get a little bit uh, sweaty down. I'm an Irish lad as well, yeah. and I turn red as well. Yeah. And just this humidity, you being able to battle it personally, I think you should be proud of. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I'll be, take a double. Of I, I, I think you. I think you should. Be, there will probably be three of them here if we really get into it. I've heard now, and I don't know much about you know everything that happens in the college football world, the recruiting world. I've heard a lot of Louisiana guys like it's almost their entire thing is to stay in Louisiana and play for LSU. A yeah. lot of loyalty to the state by yes. people from Louisiana. Have you found that out as well? And is, is it very apparent? No, I think it's, it's this. This is the flagship university, and and kids grow up wanting to be. Uh, uh, part of LSU and, and be here and play here. But but I think there's a couple of states like that. I think it's like when I was at Cincinnati, really, Pat, it was you wanted to go and be a Buckeye. You wanted to go to Ohio State. And, and I think LSU is a lot like that in the same way that you grow up, you want to play at LSU. So you've got that ground base of support. And so for us, it's recruit the heck out of the state of Louisiana. And and we do. And, and that's really, really Athletes. important to us. Absolutely. We got four twos just everywhere around. Here. Mm -hmm. It's um, for me, you know, at Notre Dame, and I love my time at Notre Dame. But you're traveling all over the country, and Catholic you're, school kids, right? You're looking. Well, at and 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 look, I mean, they're high standards academically as well, and and so, but you got to go into every state and pull the best kid out of that state, right? Here, you just need to pull your base and and do a great job in the state of Louisiana. So it, it allows you to really develop deeper relationships over a longer period of time. Oh, with like high school coaches. Yeah, and, and really just spend a lot of time with those kids when they're, you know, sophomores and juniors and seniors and build those relationships. When you are recruiting those kids, Coach, and this is a huge story for tomorrow, do you ask them, hey, will you be nervous if there's a live Tiger on the sidelines while we're question. playing? Or Listen, something? I'm a Tiger fan. Okay. <laughs> period. Live, live yep. Tigers? Yeah, yeah. I'm a Tiger fan, period. Okay, no, me no too. Me. I like yeah. Tigers. I like live Tigers. There's a Tiger living outside here. Right there. Did you go see Mike Sepp? Where? Mike Seven. See this side. I, I, I love I love our the habitat over there. Yeah. The way we do things over there. I mean, did you know those rocks are cooling rocks and heated rocks? 
for Mike? Sales at, why there. not? Only the best. For uh, agreed. You know, that's exactly. getting lost in a story. It sounds like now you, you talk about Ohio kids wanting to go to Ohio State. We have the face of that. AJ Hawks back in studio has a question for you, Coach. Yeah, AJ, Coach. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, great to see you, Coach. Obviously, an unbelievable environment you will have there. You have every single game. But I'm just wondering, as far as recruiting, how many recruits do you think you're going to have at the game tomorrow, and how important is a game like this to showcase to all these people that are already committed, or you possibly want to have commitments from? Obviously, AJ, this is a huge environment for us. Um, you know, we'll, we'll have upwards of 300 uh, recruits and families wow. here. Um, we've got a couple of official visits uh, that will happen, which will be the targeted ones. But um, this, you know, obviously these are huge, right? And they're targeted when it's LSU, Alabama. Everybody has that on their schedule, and they want that as their official. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's like really paint. Yeah. Perfect. I mean, it's a straight line. Right? Beautiful. Well, let's get the paint on there. Need it. Straight that right? line. No is paint, good. no field, no yeah, field, no it's game. It's got to look good. No game, no recruiting. Excellent. <laughs> so, I mean, and it's got to look good for recruiting, right? I so, get it. We get so, it. Uh, so let's talk about the LSU Bama rivalry. Yeah. I think I've learned about it a lot this week from listening to Coach Saban talk about it whenever he was at Bama. Obviously, he has been here before, won a national championship here, yep. so a lot of connections in it. This is a massive one, right? And you talk about oh, targeting yeah. for recruiting, no doubt. for everything. This no is doubt. And, and we run into them, excuse me, in so many ways, you know, not only on the recruiting trails, but, you know, we're, we're you know, in competition for so many different things. And so... These kids love this opportunity. This is why they sign up to either go to Alabama or LSU to play in this game. So I really don't need to say much. Uh, this, you, you go to a practice, Pat, and you know what this is like. Oh, yeah. These kids are so locked in to what they're doing and their preparation because they live for this opportunity. So um, it will be an exciting atmosphere. On you lose Jaden. Yep. He's pretty good. Yeah. He's he, he's good, he's good at football. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a that's all a good, levels. That's a good description. He has walked right. He's potentially going to win the MVP and the offensive rookie of the year if they're able to somehow maintain this incredible heater they're on over there with Cliff Kingsbury, which seems possible because of Jaden's leadership. Obviously, you lose a couple wide receivers as well. Yeah. Tell me about this year's team. Nussmeier seemingly is figuring it out on the offensive side. He is. He's a first-year starter, um, but a very talented player. And, and, and I think the growth, obviously, has happened from week to week. Obviously, turning the football over against A&M was, you know, certainly that growth that he'll need to have as you go into a game like a, a Alabama. You can't turn the football over and expect to live. Yeah. Um, but I think that that's his maturation. Um, I think this comes down to you have to be good at all phases when you play in games like this. You know, you can't play two quarters against a and and look real good at halftime and then turn it over in the second half and expect to live on the road. That's the same thing in these games. You've got to play four quarters of really good football in special teams. You saw our special teams oh, yeah. debacle. Uh, we've got to play well in special teams. You've got to play well on offense and defense. If you do that, we've got a great chance. Yeah, it, it does feel like sometimes you get – yes, you see, though. Oh, each and every oh, week. Every week. Oh. It's I assume like the, you respected it, but then you get there and you're like, okay. This, I think Urban Meyer said in the NFL, uh, he said every week it's Alabama. It, it's like, it, it feels like now in the SEC, it's like every week. Because NIL, I think, is helping a lot of teams. Yeah, I, and I just think that when you go on the road in, the, in this league, I mean, the fan base, it is so engaged. It is such an advantage when you go on the road that you have to play through all of that, the distractions of doing that. And, and you better play well for four quarters. If not, um, you're in trouble. Where are you from? Massachusetts originally. Uh, hell yeah. Yeah, but listen, <laughs> I, 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 listen, I got Midwest in me. You know what I mean? Yeah, I got, hey, man. I got What's the South problem, Bend. Ben? I know you're there. I got for Cincinnati. Oh, yeah. What's my you know? problem? What's my problem? I got you know what my problem is. You know what my problem is. We got one mass hole. Just a couple mass holes. can't. You can't. You can't. Just a couple guys. Yeah. Yeah. Two, two, uh, two, that makes a quorum. We, we're in trouble. Uh -oh. we, we're, yeah, that's his, his. AP Tone has a question for you. Yeah, Coach, obviously before your time, you had Odell and Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase, and then and then last year you have Malik Neighbors and, and Brian Thomas Jr. drafted at the wide receiver position. Where on, And then you Aaron Anderson and Kyron Lacey this year are unbelievable. Where on campus is the wide receiver factory located? Yeah, is it around here? Is it outside next to the Tiger? Listen, it's the water in the state of Louisiana. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I think, you know, 
Look, and, and we talked about this, the, the high school football here, uh, the ability for kids to play all year round um, and, and really develop uh, because they love this game. They're outdoors playing this game. They're not playing PlayStation, not doing other things. They're playing football uh, since they're little kids and they just grow up playing awesome? this game. It is. It's awesome. They're outdoors playing things, playing games, playing pickup, getting together and, and doing that instead of sitting on the couch and, and, and doing other things other than playing the game. You can also go hogging and frogging out here. Too. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's a lot to do because it's so hot all the time. It's great. Might it's as well awesome. utilize the... Get outside, let's play some games. Let's see yeah. what hey, I wanted to ask you, and I didn't want to interrupt, but okay. what did you think of the field goal posts here? The the double ones? Yeah. I think it's old school, right? Does it, does it, does it give you a visual kind of now, difference? What's the reason Yeah, because that? obviously we're, we're the double goal post, the, the H goal post compared to the single goal, the, the, the one post. Yeah, yeah. And, Coach, and, I like that. I like know. that you're asking Pat. If if he says no, I don't like it as a kicker. Are you going to change it? You're going to keep it? No, I'm going to keep it because that <laughs> means anybody that's a visitor that comes in here has uh -huh. got to deal with that. Correct. And it does look. And, and we have them on our practice field, so we see them every single day. So I want to know if that's a real advantage for us. It does kind yeah. of screw with you. It yeah? messes with you a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah, because like the single one, it goes out. The yeah. Single one, it goes out. So optically, it looks. It's bigger. a little different. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Okay, there you go. There's your okay. advantage. Okay, hmm. that's, I didn't even I come down to a kick. Because just optically, I was trying to piece it together there, and it's been a while since I've kicked a field goal, but like when it's a single one and then it goes out, like it just looks different because you know, it looks bigger. This one, it's like just straight up. Yep. It's like, wait a second. Feels like I'm kicking. And then this big ass board, $19.8 million dollars you guys yes, put into the stadium? Yes, 19 point something million into the stadium. The ribbon boards, the video boards, the lighting. Mm -hmm. We've got the light show. It's, yes. it's an amazing atmosphere. But look, as you know, it all depends on how you play. And we've traditionally are going to play well in here, and that brings the entire atmosphere together. 102,000, I think it's the fifth largest stadium yes, yeah. in, in America. It's a great environment. That's awesome. Pat Connor. Yeah, Coach, you have kind of lived through the PZ, BCS era yep. where you got to win every game, and if you yep. lose one game, the whole entire season's ruined. Mm -hmm. And now with the 12-team playoff, it's a little different. You know, yep. you can win, and you can get in with two, three losses maybe. How, how much better is that as a coach? Because every week you're not living and dying with your entire season. Obviously, you want to win every game, but is there a different feel to it this year because there is that little leeway, especially in the SEC? Y yes and no. I, I mean, I think what's been hard for coaching, you know, across the board is there's so many distractions now that, that just keeping your team locked into week to week is hard enough. Because of this? You think? Yeah, it's attached to their hand. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you see it's, everything. it's unbelievable. So they hear all of these shows. They hear all of the information that's out there. So it's really been about eliminating distractions from week to week, but I, it, it is, I think, from a big picture standpoint, there's so many teams that are still part of this now going later into October. I remember, you know, the, when the shows first started talking about the teams, there'd only be about eight or ten teams that really had a chance. Now there's 20, 25 teams yeah. that really have a chance. I think it's good for college football. Army still in the conference. Absolutely. Could you imagine? I mean, no it's, doubt. It's going to go bananas, but to his point about the SEC and a Big Ten, I'm excited to see, you know, how much they are in favor in the 12 seeds this year going forward. I think there's going to, you know, I don't want to say, what does it say? Something settles? Uh, yeah. Everything kind of settles in. I think that's going to happen with this 12-team playoff. Agreed. And, and I also think the first year there's going to be a little bit of, you know, okay, that's the way it's going to go this year. But moving forward, I think we're all going to learn from this first year. And I think you might see, hey, strength of schedule might play a bigger role moving forward. Yeah. Who you play versus who you didn't play. I think that's going to play a role in it. But I think we're going to get through the first year, and I think we're going to hammer down maybe a little bit better on who those 12 team should be. Hammer. Don. Ty Schmidt has the last question for you back in Indianapolis. Go ahead, Ty. Yeah, Coach, everyone always talks about how the SEC is different, and while that is true, if you just watch the games, coming from Notre Dame, you know, like, the expectation, you have to win every week there, too. So, yes. did, did you know, like, do you think being at Notre Dame kind of prepared you for this? And, and at what point did you kind of recognize hey, the SEC is different, whether it was the spring game or, you know, week in, week out, because your time at Notre Dame, you know, you obviously you made you made the, the playoff, and it's not like you're playing spring chickens every week. You know, you're nationally televised games, kind of like the one you're going to play in tomorrow. 
yeah, no question. The, the expectations uh, of being at Notre Dame um, prepare you for uh, a program like LSU or Alabama. I mean, because the standard is, you know, uh, win a championship. Because you're not playing for a conference championship in Notre Dame. You're playing to get in the playoffs and win a championship. So the expectations of Notre Dame coming here, you know, I, I've got that down. The difference in the SEC compared to the competition that I was playing week in and week out is edge players, defensive linemen, oh. um, and probably just the overall top end skill player um, kind of is a wow. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what hit me first being in the SEC. That player is exceptional. And I didn't see that player each and every week. So that guy runs 4 3 right there? Yeah, the guy on the other side, he runs four two five. Oh. Oh, what about the guy outside? Oh, yeah, four one eight. He's seventeen. He, yeah, <laughs> he, yeah. He just graduated. He actually skipped his last semester. He, he can't even go to the prom. He, he runs faster than all of them. Yeah. So it is phenomenal to watch. How do you feel about the? Uh, oh, 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 suck, suck that, that tiger. tiger thick, thick. I think is what they say about the humidity and. Uh, uh, yeah, I, it's I, I, something like that. You guys, listen. This must be a, a PG show now. No. <laughs> Uh, we dance. Yeah. 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 Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. I think your sponsors uh, are loving it. Um, no, they actually get on board because we. Oh, good. Because the opposite. Hear you. Um, we love it. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's part of what we do, and it's who we are. And, and sometimes we have to apologize. Most of the time, we go. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Don't Amen. ever apologize. Amen. Don't Amen. ever apologize. And uh, that same thing goes for a live tiger. It's going to be on his side. Uh -huh. That's cool. That's sweet. That's sports. And uh, thank you so much for taking time My twice pleasure, guys. for us today. No, no. I'm, I'm glad I had. Where did you go? Where did you go? We saw you walk. Uh, yeah. My locker room's back in there. We went in there and uh, we did some push-ups and uh, we had a cold, uh, cold beer.